Hello guys, welcome back to Tax Writers. In this video, we want to have a quick discussion on iterative solutions of partial differential equations, more specifically elliptic problems, elliptic equations, using techniques like Jacobi method or Geis Seidel, this kind of stuff, specifically for solving Laplace and Poisson equations. Let's see what it is. Okay, but what is the problem of the previous schemes that we discussed, I mean in previous videos, that we cannot employ them for, you know, some problems. They look like they are very sophisticated and we can apply them to any kind of problem, but that's not the case, especially for problems that are called elliptic problems. Yeah, I don't want to discuss the mathematics behind, maybe later on we will, that what way they, we call it elliptic or parabolic or hyperbolic. But for these kind of elliptic problems that you don't have the term for the transient term, the, the, the time dependent term or time derivative, then the problem is uh, you don't have anything to, for example, like a time to formulate your problem upon that or based upon that, let's say. So, for example, for the Poisson equation or the, the Laplace equation, which is actually the Poisson equation with the f as zero, f equals zero, the the, the problem is, uh, uh, let's discuss for Laplace equation. The problem is we, when we discretize it on space, let's, like in this case, this is the problem. This is the equation. Let's say that this is p because uh, in continuity equation, Navier-Stokes, it, this problem comes with a pressure, and that's why it's easier to 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 see these kind of notations for p. But then when you, when you write it like this for the Laplace of Poisson, I said for Poisson it's just with f or b something here. When you discretize it, you know that this is a central difference for x and y. Then you end up to this one, which is actually you know, they're all unknown at this moment. But in previous videos, in previous techniques, like for example, for time dependent diffusion problem or convection problem, you had always a kind of T that was like, okay, you have this U or uh, P or whatever at time zero and then you had another time T1 and then you could compute this U according to the values that we could obtain from the previous time step. But in this case they are all unknown for us and actually this is the, the one that we want to solve for but the, the rest are also unknown. And that's why we need a kind of iterative solution. So the stencil also shows, shows you that everything is interconnected. If we want to describe the stencil for the rest, you can see that everything is interconnected. There is no start. There is no point, initial point that you can start and go through to, to find a solution. And this is where the iterative approach comes into play. Which means that you start with an initial guess. So you start with an initial guess of everything, like for this point, just for this point, and also for the rest. And you try to solve this equation for that. So it's, it's not initial con initial condition. You, we don't call it initial condition. It's just initial guess. And you try to compute the next or the next values according to this uh, these things. So when you want to compute this, for example, Pij, you use the pre for, for the neighbors, for adjacent cells or grid points, you use values from previous time step. This is not actually time step, you know, this, I mean, the from previous guess or previous solution. And you continue this until you have, for example, this is called the tolerance or relative tolerance drops below a certain value that is like as small as e to the minus 8 or e to, uh, sorry 1 to the minus 8 or 1 to the minus 5 and when this this occurs you mean that the solution doesn't change from step to step and then you say that the iteration has converged and in some cases it, if the tolerance never drops between uh, below a certain threshold you say that yeah it's a sort of divergence so 
this is very important and there are lots of techniques to improve this convergence. <clears throat> In this case, we will discuss, uh, you know, the, the easiest one is the Jacobi method that is very easy to implement, but it has some convergence issue. But there are more advanced iterative techniques that you can employ. And they have, uh, you know, they have tried to improve this rate of convergence so it can converge faster, let's say. For doing this, uh, yeah, this is, uh, as you saw in the previous, so this is a kind of reformulate, reformulating this, rearranging this, moving this to the right hand side and then dividing the equation both sides by four and then trying to go through this iteratively. This is how it's going to work. So for, for, for the problem, for the sample problem that we want to study in this case, this is a very, a very nice problem setup. As you can see that it is P is equal to zero at x as and y and has a sort of trigonometric function at y at the most uh, the highest value of y and has a let's say no flux at x equals l so when we plot this um, uh, solution it says that uh, this uh, problem has an analytical solution yeah this is the analytical solution that we can derive and then this is the code to plot it but uh, let's plot the Laplace solution, analytical solution of Laplace on this. And this is the solution that we had. So you can see that here, this is, uh, this, is, this is y, this is x. So when x is 0, you can see which is this boundary, or let's say this boundary. Again, z is 0 or p is 0 and the y is, when y is 0, z is still 0. This is non-flux and non-flux means that it, it sees what is occurring in the other regions. So this is actually driven by this, bind, by this boundary here, which is where y equals yl, this one. So that's why I said that this is a very, very nice problem to start with. So this one. And then uh, you can see that, yeah, this is uh, how the problem is. A uh, uh, problem can be solved. So this actually moves and then it really brings other points to, to itself. This is a very nice problem, but then uh, let's solve it with numerical techniques and uh, the iterative ones. So how do we iterate, iterate and how do we start, stop? So how do we define the, the tolerance actually? For defining the tolerance, we use a term called norm. And the norm is nothing by the summation of the square root of the difference of each point. So you know from previous videos that these are actually the previous time point. This is the current time point here. We don't have time. Again, I mention it, I emphasize it. If we don't have time, we mean previous uh, or let's say successive or previous um, uh, solution. And we sum it and then we square root of it. And because this is actually the, the uh, in uh, the order of two, we call it L2 norm. It can be L1 or higher ones like L3. And then we normalize it by dividing it to the norm of, uh, of, any, of any of the previous solution. So it's, 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 it's a normalized uh, norm. And this can be the, our tolerance. And computing the norm is very simple using SymPy, I'm sorry, using NumPy uh, vectors, or NumPy, let's say, arrays. It's a sort of MATLAB computation. Please refer to the NumPy video if you don't know how, why this, this is the equivalence of this. <clears throat> and then uh, for the Jacobi, so we start with the tolerance of one to the minus six and the maximum iterations because you don't want it to, to run forever. It's also nice that you stop at a certain threshold, in this case, 20 thousands of iterations. And uh, you start to go through this, as you can see, while difference is more than all tolerance, uh, tolerance or iteration is less than the maximum number of iterations. And you start to iterate it and you apply the boundary conditions also. And uh, this is also called a relaxation that, uh, that because, uh, you know, you apply the, for in this case, the trigonometric wave, the sin sinusoid wave on one of the boundaries and then it will relax. You, you let the solution relax over time. That's why we, we, they call it like this. So you see that yeah, this, this uh, figure shows it, that you apply this to this boundary and then you iterate through this. So we, we call the Laplace to the Jacobian, uh, sorry, Jacobian this with a tolerance of one to the minus eight 
and you see that it yields to something like this. This is very, very nice and exciting that, uh, yeah, this, this works actually in action. But then, as I said, for convergence rate and how you choose the different, the, the delta X values and also tolerances, you see that, yeah, it's, it's a sort of uh, relative, the way that you change the L2 norm in, in, uh, by concerning, but changing the delta X, uh, you can change it, but it says that, for example, if you change the way that you discretize the Newman boundary conditions on the interface, like for example, for X, as you saw, that was a kind of Newman boundary condition, and you improve it by the second order Newman condition, we described it in previous videos, that what does it mean? Uh, you can yield a better uh, accuracy. So for, even for iterative solvers, it is really important what kind of accuracy you use, especially for the terms that they have uh, special derivatives like Newman, Newman boundary conditions. And this is the concept of the iterative solution. Very nice, very simple, but uh, at the same time, very tricky because uh, as you can see, in the, let me go for, for example, this one. Uh, before going to the Poisson uh, equation, because the Poisson equation is exactly the same. It's just, it has only one extra term on the right hand side, but the technique is the same. But uh, for example, back to this problem that we had, and this time we want to solve it using, for example, successive over relaxation or guy settle. These are the kind of techniques that improve it a bit. That, for example, for the guy Seidel, it says that instead of taking all the values from previous time steps, let me show you here, uh, instead of taking uh, from the previous time step, yeah, use the values that are already computed. So when you move like this, uh, when you move from this point to this point, this is the way that we go iter iteratively through the solution. So then we start here. This is what we did also in previous videos. When you compute this value, you have already computed the, the value of the previous point. In the original Jacobi method, you use all these values from the previous time step or let's say previous solution. In Jacobi, in a, sorry, go seidel method, it says that please choose the value, because this one is computed, use the new value, the updated one. So the guy seidel technique would be something like this. And for successive over relaxation, uh, the thing is, uh, let me show you. Um, here it discusses kind of implementation pra implementation uh, challenges. I don't want to go for that. But uh, for successive over relaxation, the the thing is when you when you hear the term relaxation, it's always something that comes with a kind of weighted solution. Did you say, for example, the value of u at the time at the current time step equals the weighted solution of it? Sorry to the previous time step plus something like this to something else. And you always consider a kind of, you know, weighted solution, a weighted residual, a weighted solution of that to compute the value of you at the t new time step or a new solution. And this is a tech kind of technique that successive over relaxation uses. Let me just skip all this implementation. This is a really nice stuff because uh, when you want to solve this, uh, like for uh, gauss Seidel, you cannot use NumPy because NumPy uh, stores all the array of the time step or the previous solution at one array, so you cannot use the updated values. So you need to use raw Python loops or nested loops, and they are very slow. And here it describes that yeah, you can compile Python codes using NumPy, Numba, Numba package to make it faster. And this is what the authors, the original authors of these notebooks are trying to do. So they install Numba and then they they have a showcase for it and then they call it and back to Jacobi and go Seidel, they try to, to run it. So this is actually a go Seidel technique using Numba. But yeah, this is what I wanted to say. The successive over relaxation the term relaxation is related to weighted residuals, sorry, weighted um, uh, solution. So you can see that they define an omega here and then they have, you know, this sort of, they conditionally apply the value. For example, you can see that a portion of the previous solution contributes 
to to the new solution of the of the variable in the new time step and this is what the successive over relaxation uh, does actually in action and it says that the value of omega should be something between zero and two and when it is zero, um, yeah, it has, uh, for example, when it is one or if it, when it is zero, uh, it has a specific meaning. So when it is one, for example, in this case, successive over relaxation will be just uh, similar to ghost sado. This is uh, really something that this kind of iterative schemes are related or interconnected internally to each other. But uh, yeah, well, the, as you can see, uh, this iterative techniques, they have their own um, uh, beauty, I can say, but at the same time, uh, they have their own challenges. And uh, in order to take advantage of them, you can really tune similar to previous things that I showed you. You need to really keep balance between the technical uh, problems, technical challenges in implementation, and at the same time, the, the convergence rates and easier of, uh, let's say, the accuracy of the solution. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, what I wanted to, to show you uh, that uh, how this really how this is important to know how to deal with iterative solutions. They are not really scary, and we will face these things a lot in the future. When, when especially we want to deal with uh, like uh, level set equations or Navier-Stokes equations, we really need to use these kind of iterative solutions. And also when we want to have our own uh, high performance computing simulations and high performance computing solutions, at those situations, uh, these iterative solutions will come. And these techniques are the some essential methods that we will employ. But uh, for now, uh, that's enough, I think. And for, for conjugate gradient, this is more advanced. I will describe it later on uh, in, in, in a finite element uh, method when, when I want to describe preconditioning and those kind of stuff. So I hope that you enjoy it. This is the end of actually the finite difference uh, method, uh, the, the videos that I wanted to have on finite difference method. I, I, I ignored the convection problem because, you know, this is for hyperbolic equations. This is not, a, this is not uh, the type of equations that we use in, in projects that I want to show you. That's why I totally skipped it. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, you can follow it on, on your spare time. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, from next videos, we will start to talk on finite element method, which is actually the main tool, main technique that we want to use in Tox Riders. So I hope you enjoy this episode and also this series. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Bye.